Okay, in this topic, we're going to talk about how we integrate identity as a third party service. So there's various objectives within this one. It's on premises, cloud and federated. So as you're dealing with on premises, this basically will utilize the LDAP directory, which is your active directory capability. Um, and it is an integration with SSO with your single sign on. It can use different mechanisms such as SAML, Windows authentication, and also can provide no support at all. Uh, the configuration changes may be required through SSO, the application, or both. So what it's basically saying here is that as you're utilizing your SSO, you may have to make some changes to you, the application or the SSO to allow the on-premises integration of your LDAP directory, which is with your Active Directory capability. Uh, so as you integrate both the LDAP uh, logging or authorization capability into your SSO, there's some changes will have to occur. Provisioning is a key piece of all of this and it's process for creation, modification and deactivation. As you are provisioning accounts through these various uh, mechanisms, it's imperative that you understand this process, uh, especially the deactivation and, and turn off capability of these accounts. Um, it may require code changes within the application to make this provisioning work effectively. And then hopefully to this point, some APIs have been created and these APIs will make this integration very seamless and smooth. However, if they haven't been, it'll take more code changes within your application. The identity management service, uh, this is provides a pre integrated solution to your application um, and allows you to, to these to connect well and it allows for more seamless integration. Uh, the bottom line, though, is is don't don't assume that this is going to work. Uh, the fact of it is, is that the integration works great, but you may have to have uh, individuals that will help you with this and you may have to contract outside third parties to help you integrate within your LDAP uh, because it can be simple uh, from what I've seen, but like anything else I've dealt with with identity, um, it may appear to be simple. However, at the same time, we <laughs> things struggle a bit. So keep that in the back of your mind that if you are integrating some level, if you're you know working through your CISSP and you're working for a business in whatever form that might be, be cognizant of the fact that you may have to bring in a third party to help you with this integration um, because it, it may seem simple and there could be some real good Google facts out there and some YouTube videos on how to do it well. But uh, anytime we're trying to integrate these, especially with older applications, uh, it can be a bit of a challenge. So just something to keep in mind if you're dealing with the on-premises aspects. Now, if you're working with the cloud, there's the FIDO Alliance that came out in 2012. And the, re the really cool part about that is, is that they've been coming with a standard that on how to integrate with the cloud. Um, they support public key crypto and multi-factor, which is really, really cool. Um, and, and so by setting this alliance, they saw where the cloud was going and where things were going. And so therefore, this was set up ahead of time. It will allow you to use biometric data on the individual user's devices, uh, which gives you another factor, and it, which is really quite amazing that you can have all that. And then it does give a standard for creating, allowing APIs to be created between applications. Uh, it utilizes universal authentication framework protocol, and it, the device confirms a private key with a pin or a fingerprint. So it's basically utilizing that universal framework, which is, we've talked about in the past, these frameworks are good guideposts and, and ways for you to to understand how to integrate things within your environment and as a security framework those are another example of that well the use of these frameworks gives those standards for people to use and so therefore it allows them to use a private key with the pin so basically your private key on your device with a pin or a fingerprint uh, so that therefore it supports that public key infrastructure now, Azure Active Directory is really a cool tool. Um, now, the various other aspects, Google and uh, Amazon have their own type of solution. I think the Active, they have an Active Directory Direct Connect with Amazon. I'm not sure what they have with Google, but Azure Active Directory is a Active Directory Connect tool called DirSync, and it basically propagates your AD because Microsoft has the AD capability. It propagates it to the cloud. One of the big issues that has been in the past is taking your environment from your on-premise premises network and moving it to the cloud. Uh, Active Directory allows uh, that communication to occur while you're on-prem and it basically keeps all of your credentials and, and verifies you are who you say you are. Well, when that propagates to the cloud, it can be a bit of a challenge. And so therefore, these tools can be used to help with that. Now, 
it up it updates like every couple of hours with the on-prem Active Directory servers. Uh, so therefore, it, it will keep you relatively in sync. It also syncs with Office 365. Um, so as Office 365 is going to the cloud, it will sync with that as well. So it basically takes everything from your on-prem environment to the cloud. Now, as you're dealing with federated identity management and single identification, this is used by multiple enterprises um, and basically brings in the federated, which you talked about before, our federated identity management. And it allows SAML, which is your security assertion markup language, to be used. And it allows for the, cons the consolidated transmission of authorization across partners, which was your Facebooks, your Googles, and so forth. And the key around this is, is it allows you to integrate with Active Directory. And it's a really a low cost option with AD. It really is. But the simple fact of the matter is that it doesn't, you don't have to have the opportunity cost. You also don't have to have contractors coming in and setting these things up if you can allow federated access within your environment. Uh, so something to consider. It, I, I really like it. It's amazing how it can provide that level of granularity for your environment and the login capability that uh, in many cases in the past, it took a lot of contractors and a lot of time to get stood up. Okay, these are the references from the ISC Squared CISSP Study Guide and also the InfoSec Institute uh, that talks around domains and identity and access management, uh, identity as a service.